everyone. I'm Miss Heather from the Tewksbury Public Library. And I'd like to welcome you to Little Einstein Science. Today, we will be talking about chemistry. We'll be using baking soda and vinegar to make chemistry powered boats. We will also be using baking soda and water to make invisible ink. So you definitely wanna make sure you have some baking soda and some vinegar on hand today. We'll be using a few other household items as well but these should be things that you already have in your house. Nothing too special that you need to go out and get. So get ready, get excited. We have some fun science for you today. For this experiment, you will of course need vinegar and baking soda. You will also need a straw, a pair of scissors, and an empty water bottle. And I removed the label so it'd be a little bit easier to see everything. So I recommend removing your label too, if you're able to do that. And I have some Loctite or blue tack. Um, this is because we'll be cutting a hole in the bottom of the water bottle. And we wanna make sure that no air will escape um, between the hole and the straw that we'll be putting in there. So that Loctite will go right in between my straw and my water bottle, just making sure that no air is able to leave this area because we want all the air going straight out the straw. All right, so gather those materials and meet me right back here. So the first thing we wanna do is cut a hole in the bottom of the water bottle on the other side from where the cap is. And this is a step for a grown up to do uh, because we are going to be using some sharp tools and it's easy to slip when you're cutting plastic. So have a grown up cut that little hole for you right there. I'm gonna demonstrate I have an X-Acto knife here and I'm just gonna make sure that I get a hole poked in the bottom of the water bottle. And I put mine right there. It's a little bit tricky to see um, because it all looks the same, but I've got mine right here in my water bottle. I'm just making it big enough for the straw to fit in without collapsing. So you can push the straw right through. And you want the straw to stay round. So I think I need to make my hole a little bit bigger so that my straw can stay round and not be squished. All right, that looks pretty good for my hole. So I've got a little bit of my straw on the inside and I'm gonna trim it because I don't need that much sticking out. So I'm gonna trim it right about here and that will be enough of the straw because that's where the air will escape from. And that will be a great amount of straw to make it all work. So I'm just gonna cut my straw right there. All right, and there you have it. I've got my straw sticking out of my water bottle. Here is my water bottle and I'm ready to go on to the next step. So the next thing you wanna do is secure that, water, uh, that straw in place with the water bottle. So I have my blue tack that I mentioned earlier for that. If you have tape or any other kind of putty or maybe even clay, just something that you can put around the straw in the hole to make sure that the straw is the only way that the air can escape. So I'm just gonna peel off some of my blue tack, squish it up a little bit, get it a little sticky and get it warm and ready. Roll it like a snake. All right, and when you're ready, just fit that right around the straw opening, really sealing in that straw and the hole and the water bottle. And once you have your straw secured with whatever you have to use, we'll be ready for the next step. And this is where we'll be using our vinegar and baking soda for this next step. All right, I think that should be good for mine. And you can just see I have my blue tack all around. And so yours should look a little something like this. 
So the next thing you want to do is rotate your water bottle so that straw hole that you made is at the top. And then we're going to pour some of our vinegar right inside the mouth of the water bottle. And we put the straw towards the top so that the vinegar should not spill out. I'm going to do mine over the sink anyway, just in case. All right, so pour some of that vinegar in. Um, no real rhyme or reason to it, but I have about this much vinegar in my bottle. And I'm going to set that down while I do my next step which is to get a paper towel and we're going to pour some of the baking soda right on the paper towel and then we'll roll up the paper towel and baking soda and we'll put it right inside the mouth of the water bottle. All right, so get some baking soda poured onto your paper towel and we're going to roll that up as small as possible because we want that to fit inside that narrow opening of the water bottle. Once you have your baking soda all rolled up in your paper towel, you want to make sure you have your cap of your water bottle handy and nearby because as soon as you stuff in the baking soda, you're gonna to want to put the cap on right away. So I'm gonna pick up my water bottle, I'm gonna tip it back as much as possible so that the vinegar is away. And I'm gonna put in the baking soda. I'm gonna put the cap on right away. Tie that up, give it a little shake, put it in the water so that the straw side is in. And you should be able to see your book move all around. And if you'd like to, once it kind of stops spluttering, you can give it another little shake, put the straw side in again, and it will keep on going because you've reactivated the baking soda and the vinegar together. So you might be wondering why your boat moved across the water when you put the baking soda and vinegar inside. And that's because the baking soda and the vinegar react and they form a gas called carbon dioxide. And so when this happens, the gas has only one place to escape out the straw. So that's why it pushes your boat forward and makes it move through the water. And that's kind of similar actually as to what happens inside airplanes. The hot gases that are inside are thrown backwards out of the engine and that makes an airplane move forward. So you kind of did something a little bit similar when we made these uh, water bottle boats. All right, now it's time to make our invisible ink. So to make invisible ink, you will need baking soda. You'll need a tablespoon measure. You'll need a cup. You'll need a cotton swab. Sometimes these are also called Q-tips. You'll need some paper and you'll also need a heat source. So for example, this could be the heater in your house. If you have some baseboard heaters or some radiators, it could also be the stovetop in your house. It could also be a clothing iron. It could be a light bulb that's not made of halogen. Pretty much anything that has a direct source of heat uh, that's steady and reliable will be perfect for revealing your invisible message. So gather those materials and let's get ready to make some invisible ink. So to make our invisible ink, you want to measure out two tablespoons of baking soda and two tablespoons of water. I put mine in separate cups. I already measured them out and that's just a little bit easier for me. And I am going to pour the baking soda into the water while stirring just to help make sure that all of the baking soda is stirred up because it's really important for your ink to have them well combined, well mixed, and it makes a much better effect. All right, so make sure you're mixing, mixing, mixing. 
If you can mix while you stir, it'll be even better. If you can't though, that's okay. You just might mix a little bit more at the end. Once that's all in there, make sure you give it a few more good mixes because this here is our ink for our invisible ink. And you can see it's kind of turning this whitish color, which is good. That means that they're well mixed. You don't really want to have any of it separate. You really want it to be totally together. So once yours is looking like this, give it a little check on the bottom. Just be careful with your um, cotton swab or Q-tip because they can soak up a lot of that water. You just want to make sure you're not dripping too much. And give it a little check on the bottom. Mine's looking pretty good. So I am ready to put my message right on my paper with my invisible ink. And so to write with invisible ink, all you'll need to do is take one of your cotton swabs or your Q-tips, dip that into the ink you just made. I like to give it one more quick stir. I um, Make sure it drips off. You don't want it to be too wet. Think of it kind of like you're painting with watercolors. You don't want too much paint on the brush. You don't want it to be too wet because then it might ruin your paper. So get your paper ready, get your ink onto your cotton swab and you can go ahead and just write as if you were using a regular pencil and paper. So I'm gonna put my note on my paper. You wanna make sure you leave some space between the letters. Sometimes it can bleed a little bit. They can sort of run into each other. So you wanna make sure that there's a little bit of extra space just to make sure that your message is really, really clear. You can draw a picture, you can write a message, whatever you would like because this is your invisible ink. And once you have your message on there, you wanna make sure that your paper is completely dry. So you might need to wait a while. You might even need to wait up to 15 minutes just to make sure your paper is totally dry. But once it is, that's when it's time to find your heat source. So at this step in our invisible ink, it's really important to make sure that you have an adult supervising you because we need to heat up the paper so that our message will appear. So a direct heat source that would be really good would be the burners on your stovetop. It could be your clothing iron at a low setting, not on the steam setting. It could be one of the heaters inside your house. It could be a hair dryer. And you could also use a light bulb as long as it's not made of halogen because those ones can be flammable. All right, everyone, here I am in the library kitchen I'm about to use the stovetop as my heat source to reveal my invisible ink. So all I'll do is just hold my paper right over the burner like this. If you would like to, and I definitely recommend it, um, think about having a grown up hold the paper for you because sometimes your fingers can get hot, especially if you're near the heat source. So get ready and here we go. I'm gonna turn on the burner right here. And then all I'll do is just hold the paper on top, just like this. It does take a few minutes, so you wanna be a little bit patient. It's not instant, but once it starts to appear, it looks really, really cool. You can move your paper around gently a little bit, back and forth, because I don't know about you, but I certainly filled up my whole page with my message. So I wanna make sure the whole thing is revealed. I'm just starting to see some very faint markings on my paper. And it's been a minute or so. And here we go. Once it starts to react, you can definitely see it getting ready. Just make sure you're still moving your paper a little bit. 
You want all of the parts of your message to appear so that someone knows what you're saying. You can even turn your paper over and do the other side and just get a little heat in a different way. And that should also help to make your message appear as well. So you can see my message is starting. I'm gonna keep moving mine around and get the spots that aren't looking as dark. Right, and I think you can see what my invisible ink secret message says. Hello, science is awesome. So we just made our invisible ink. And if you're wondering why it worked, that's because when the baking soda and the water solution gets heated, it gets heated at a slower rate than the paper. And it takes a good amount of heat to oxidize the carbon in the baking soda and make it kind of turn brown. And that's the same thing that happens with apples. The oxidation or the brownness that happens with apples happens when they've been sitting out too long. And so baking soda will oxidize, get a little bit brown when exposed to a heat source. So today for Little Einstein Science, we talked about two different experiments that we can do with baking soda. One of them using vinegar and the other using water. We talked about some chemical changes, some things that happen as a result of heat or of mixing things together. And we even made some invisible ink. I hope that you will tune in next week for our next video. We'll have another little Einstein's the second Thursday, or second Wednesday of next month in February. Thanks again for watching today and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you, bye.